Starting project uh, P517, uh, looking at the uh, the slider. Uh, in the overview, we kind of um, looked at drawing this uh, right side view. And so that's going to draw, drive one of our first decisions on where to put this in the um, in the model. Mention that we can mirror about the uh, the center line. So when looking at our overalls, everything adds up. I'm going to fly this out of the way. I'm going over to 2020 uh, for SolidWorks so that we can um, do a little comparison, but for the most part, we're going to see the uh, the same types of uh, things. There's not uh, any really big changes. I'm going to stay with my standard uh, templates. This is going to be a metric part, so part millimeter. Uh, let's see, did we create those? Ah, I haven't updated that yet. All right, so uh, just stay with your uh, your standard part template. And we'll see if it uh, if it launches here. And then we'll check for the, in the bottom right, the units. I'm going to switch over to millimeters, grams, and seconds. Actually, uh, go ahead and, uh, and switch yours. I want to um, illustrate one of the, uh, the things that happens if you start off an inch and then uh, have to switch over to millimeters. All right, so one of the things I noticed in the previous videos that when we go... Um, uh, some of the icons look a little bit small, so we're going to go up a little bit larger. And doesn't look like everything updated, but there we go. So maybe that'll be a little more visible. It takes up a little bit more of the work area, um, but I think it'll uh, it'll look a bit little bit better on the uh, on the video. So to uh, to get started. One of the things I want to do real quick is to go ahead and find my origin. And since it's not on in this template, we'll click on the view origins. The blue origin is one of my best indicators that the um, uh, SolidWorks is waiting for me to do something. So when I go into the right plane and go to a sketch, then it, the origin turns red. That's an indicator that I'm in the sketch along with the confirmation corner, accept and exit the sketch. We have a little bit more with the reference triad that we can uh, we can do. And our uh, our breadcrumb kind of starts the um, in the upper left to detail uh, the um, uh, kind of the direction that we've gone with this uh, this part. So first thing I'm going to do is select the line, but I want a center line. And because I'm using symmetry, uh, if you watched any of the previous videos, my mantra is vertical and infinite length. That way, when I place this on the origin, I won't ever run out of center line. Uh, whatever the extents limits of this uh, of this part, I will always have uh, center line to uh, to work with. All right, and then I can go back into line. And usually, I rather than back out of it, I just go into a new line command. And I'm looking for that coincident to the origin. And the little yellow box is telling me I'm coming off horizontal. And we're just going to sketch. And about this time, I realize I'm in inches. And I go, all right, I'm just going to go down and change over to millimeters, grams, and seconds. As soon as I do that, the sketch goes to gray and I'm no longer in the sketch, so I have to come back over and right-click, uh, or right-click on the uh, the geometry, uh, any piece of geometry in that sketch, and edit sketch, or right-click, or highlight, and then go back into uh, sketch on the, um, on the command manager. Pick one. Uh, I like to right-click on the sketch, then I know exactly what I'm getting. When I edit the sketch, we go back in, now I'm looking at my units across the bottom and I'm in millimeters. So we can start to put dimensions on. Um, it's kind of a, a choice of do you fully define before you mirror or after you mirror. Uh, so I like to have a fully defined sketch. When I mirror, I'm pretty well assured. And I did that without thinking about it. So I'm going to undo real quick. 
if you saw what I selected, I picked the center line, and this is the reason we have to have that center line, is between the object and the center line is going to give me a radial or a half dimension. As soon as I go to the opposite side of the center line, I'm going to get a dimetral or a full dimension. So I can draw half of the part and still define it, uh, dimension it, as if it was a full part. All right, so we'll go back to this one. And because I was in that mode, and you can kind of see the little D at the dimension, that's telling me I'm, I'm at dimetral. If I wanted to get out of that, I'd have to hit escape. It would take me back one step. And since that is uh, 20 millimeters across the flat, then we're okay. When I pick a vertical in this case, it jumps back in and I'm going to hit escape. And that puts me back into my linear dimensions, which is going to be 24. And then our overall height is 44. And then if I wanted to check and look at the uh, dimension, this is going to be an over-defining, so it's going to warn me, do you want to make this dimension driven? Well, yeah, I want it there for reference. I'm just going to right-click and select. I want it there for reference just because it looks kind of strange. And make sure that um, I'm getting a, a desired result. So if I go from right to left, it's going to pick everything. If I left click hold down and go from left to right, it's only going to pick what's in the box. So our window picking is very similar to other programs. Right? Um, if um, we go right into mirror, then it's going to perform the mirror uh, you know, right away. If we pick on mirror entities, then it's going to ask for the entities to mirror. In this case, I would want to go left to right so that it only picks the geometry and then I can come back and select the center line and with mirror entities it'll give me that preview that I can verify yeah that's what I want. For our features we have all of our geometry we're in a fully defined sketch I'm not worried about the points the points are kind of place markers from the uh, the mirror they don't uh, help but they don't really hurt anything so um, if you see those we're just gonna leave uh, leave them alone and when we extrude, we're going to be extruding out 280 millimeters. And then it's just a matter of which way we want to go. So for our end conditions, we have blind. I can reverse it and go 280 to the left, 280 to the right. Or if we come down to midplane, we don't really have anything else to select for the, uh, the other end conditions. If I come down to midplane, that will center it. So I'll go with uh, mid-plane. You can pick whichever uh, whichever one you want. Mm. All right, so we have our geometry. Let's go with the, uh, the 10 millimeter hole on top. And I want to go ahead and introduce the hole wizard. So the hole wizard, we can get to from the command manager. I like using the S key because, well, I don't use the S key enough, and it uh, kind of forces me very uh, uh, easily to use it and then as a quick way to get to the whole wizard. So the S key when it comes up is going to be uh, whatever tools are active and whatever functions you're performing. So that S key is going to change menus depending on what you're doing. All right, so the advantage of the whole wizard over drawing this as a circle geometry is that I'm going to be able to change to any of these other geometries if we need to update or make uh, make another uh, go a different direction, I guess would be a good way to put it. So ANSI metric is our standard. It is going to be a standard drill size. Oh, I hit the scroll wheel. So watch the scroll wheel. It will change you. And uh, once I get into the size, I'm going to scroll down. So the downside is there's a lot of 0.1 millimeters there. So I get down to 10 millimeters. And my end condition up to next is fine. If I wanted a near side countersink, far side countersink. Get to the tolerance and precision. There we go. There's uh, additional uh, values that we can put in for our tolerance if we um, 
start looking at clearance fits and press fits and those types of things. So position, we need to go to the second tab. And since I pre-selected, it's not going to ask me about a 3D sketch. If I hadn't selected that face, it would say you need to select the face or um, there's a little box for a 3D sketch. We're going to stay away from 3D sketches. I always stay away from 3D sketches until you get the foundation. 3D sketches are similar, but very different. All right, so I place it, and then we can either hit escape on the keyboard or right-click and select. And I'm going to select the point, hold down the control button, select the origin, and those are going to be horizontal. All right, so that positions it to where the hole will move left to right, but not up and down. All right, so our relation for horizontal gives us our first position and then 20 millimeters off of the end. And that got the midpoint, which I've been doing a lot lately, seems like, but it's not going to hurt anything, at least uh, that I can uh, currently identify. And if we rotate over, we'll see the, uh, the end condition going all the way through the part. All right, so that gives me my first hole. And if I decided I wanted that to be a countersink or a counterbore, well, I'm from the top. If I wanted to drive it from the bottom, then I have to change the uh, the plane. So we we're making the same types of decisions, uh, just a little bit different direction. All right. So the hole locations, since these planes are uh, you know coplanar, sharing the same plane, I can go back to the face, and because I pre-selected that face, hit the S key go into the hole wizard. We're going to pick up our five millimeter now. Now these are called out as dowel pins and dowel pins in, um, in metric are, uh, are available. So drill size dowel holes and they come with, uh, let's see, there's, um, I want to say in the drawing or in the call out, they come with uh, tolerance zones of uh, the type of press fit, so we can uh, we can utilize those, or we can leave it as a uh, as a standard. All right, so I'm going to place the first one, and we'll come over and place the second one. We're symmetrical um, over the horizontal this time. So if I go up to center line, tell it that it's horizontal infinite length, then I can place it on the origin. And if I miss the origin, Right click select get out of if I miss the origin I can always just drag that center line back to the origin or hold down the control button and select uh, the origin and the center line and make them coincident. All right, but if you can get it that first first time it's a it's a time saver. Our next relation is to select the point, hold down the control button, select the next point, those become horizontal. And while those are still selected, I'm going to come up to the uh, to the center line and we're going to perform a mirror and because they're pre-selected it's going to do the mirror immediately all right so we're 115 we're given a chain dimension so 115 from the edge and then another 160 gives us our position and then what do we have between between the two? Uh, five millimeters off of the edge. All right, so positionally, that um, well, well, we'll look at that from a tolerance stack up uh, uh, later on. So uh, really, these are the times that I start to to think about what the uh, the implications of these numbers and which way we're going to uh, drive these dimensions. All right, so we go ahead and select that. Now that was still an up to next. The um, call out is uh, a depth of five millimeters to a depth of 10 and four holes. So I need to go back in and edit the feature. That puts me back into my geometry. Instead of up to next, we're gonna give it a blind in condition and 10 millimeters. One of the things they added for 2020, or I don't remember it in 19 anyway, was do we want the depth up to the shoulder, which if this is a drill point or a ream, 
we would need a, a little bit more. And depending on what we decide as, as far as a, a fit, if we end up uh, reaming this, um, this hole to bring it to a closer size or slightly undersized, then we're going to want to go a little bit more than, uh, than the depth. So we'll have to look at what pins we selected and how they're going to interface with that, um, that bridge. But for now, we're going to say 10 millimeters to the shoulder so that it adds the drill point in addition. So let's go ahead and select. And if I rotate over a little bit using the middle mouse wheel, I should be able to find... No, nope, not really finding it. <laughs> Sometimes I can find that center point. Let's just look at this in wireframe. So we should have the 10 millimeter from the bottom to the uh, the geometry. And then if I can locate that point, the drill point for 118 or 135 degree adds another two and a half millimeters to the to the depth. All right, so we can control quite a bit in the uh, the hole wizard, and it gives us um, gives us a lot of flexibility in our geometry. All right, so we have a radius somewhere, and a radius of four on both sides. So since that's a potential stress riser, that's a good place for a radius. It does have uh, some implications in the manufacturing if this is, well, they're saying it's steel. So in steel, we're going to have to either uh, have a tool with that radius uh, ground into it so it generates the geometry, or we'll have to come back with a ball end mill and, um, and make the blend. And because we're working with inch tools, four millimeters is going to be real close to um, uh, five sixteenths, so we'll be a little bit under. And as long as we're looking at this um, in, um, you know, the tolerances that we're not going to over tolerance our radius, then a five sixteenths ball end mill would generate that uh, that geometry as well. All right, quick uh, look at the um, at the part. Uh, we need to establish our next folder. So I'm going to go up one level, go to new folder, P5-17. And we'll open up our folder, and then this becomes, we're going to stay with the um, names. Don't really like punctuation in my uh, in my title, so we'll forego the comma, but the base slider. And that gives us our first part for the project.